Hey, I'm Madison, and you're listening to Crit Out of Luck, the last song of Arcadia. Find us on social media at Crit Out of Luck, or join our Discord server to chat all things D&D. Stay cool. When last we left our heroes. What happened? Does anybody remember? Of course I remember, but Rob will tell you. <laughs> you were about to say something! <laughs> okay, fine, I'll say it. So we went back to... You were getting ready to go back, and you went and to see, like... You were gonna, like, turn Madame Malfoy over to the police or something. Oh, oh yeah! yeah. 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 We, brought her, we brought her to Mary Trump. Yeah, false. Yeah. I would never speak to cops. Who? Fair enough. It's Hector, though. All she... cops, baby, means all cops. All right. She did this is not America. Go on, though. She did do some heinous things, but she did lose her memory of those things. Mary Trope, and did we end up naming her Meriwether? Yeah, she I kind of gave her that name. They had a touching reunion, and we were like, let's go to Waleo. Yeah, so we, we did. did. So we turned into wind and went there. There, there was... Bypass all the DM's best laid plans of mice and men, as always. Happen. Yeah, I'll yeah. put it somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, and you went to the Waleo and spoke to the Harbor Master. He pointed you in the direction farther into the bog. Because a leviathan has been munching upon some ships. Yeah, which means that the ship we're looking for may well be in the care of this leviathan. (laughs) Very well might, who's to say? Who's potentially worshipped by... Lizard people. Some lizards. Mm -hmm. Uh Maybe. (laughs) Yeah, it pointed you in the direction of Lizardman Settlement. Uh, and yeah, making your way in, you came upon, upon what initially appeared to be said settlement, a collection of mud hovels. Uh, with some lizard folks scattered around. Sure. But yeah, they kind of surrounded you, and after seeing Freddy turn into wind, they were very impressed. They made some reference to, which uh, you only understood because somebody speaks. Hi, Rose. Rose. Hi, Rose. Speaks and and, and uh, uh, yes, Frank Draconic, uh, thanks to the scarf and speaking Draconic. Just being cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just like, I thought it would be similar to Infernal, so that's why I picked it years ago when we started this. Oh, yes, you waited for this moment so long. Yes, yeah, so you heard mention of some uh, prophecy of one who walks on wind, and uh, after Fred turning into the woods so impressed, they uh, took you down a giant mudslide, uh, cool. and you splash landed in a huge lake, uh, on the shore of which rested a Massive city of gold! Eldorado! 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 Rock and sick clear, and now the rain is gone! Those aren't the same songs, you're right. <laughs> Mr. John, if you would like to write our theme song, I will give you fives of dollars. Please don't DMC us. Uh, Mr. Dreamworks, <laughs> dream me a uh, work. Like introduce bum, me bum, a shell. Uh, I think that would be just great. Also, yeah. that. But yeah, so here you here you stand. Well, not stand, but here you doggy paddle, Bob. uh, bobbing in a lake uh, before the Golden City with the uh, lizard folk swimming silently like crocodiles, their large dinosaur tails <laughs> flapping from side to side as they make their way towards the city. One uh, turns his head around like 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 Nessie. Uh, to look back at you expectantly and then continues on towards the city. Hit and the time is yours. Hit him with the saucy little over the shoulder. Okay. <laughs> so believe, you can you can be on my back if you want. Or I yes. believe if I recall I was doing something similar with Kashek. I was trying to maintain some dignity, but he's a wet owl. Kashek does not no, like no. to be Do wet. Yeah. Oh, so okay. yeah, you could you could fly before you hit the surface of the water. Can you sh- can you start running I was if just, you're already in the water? Yeah. Can I start running from already? You away? jumped up. Yeah, I don't see why not. Like Dash in uh, The Incredibles. Yeah. I mean, you'll get there before they do, which means you won't know That's where you're awkward. going. Yeah, <laughs> so I. I guess I'll just swim. <laughs> what if you just did like really big lateral leaps? I was, you could just <laughs> run in circles, slowly on, moving forward. Yeah, there's no mechanic for exhaustion. <laughs> 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 or whatever. I'm just going to follow along respectfully then. Okay. Now, when you say made of gold, mm-hmm. like all of <laughs> <laughs> I don't control that. That's the city doing that. I'm not, it's, it's uh, someone, someone over there is just doing that. Entirely made of gold, or like embellished. It sure gold. looks like it. Well, you, well, you, are you? Are we close enough to like? Oh, it seems to be plated in gold. I'm wondering. That's all. Yeah. The structures look. Uh, entirely made of, like, from this distance best, you, uh, they certainly look like they're made of solid gold. 
it's not, yeah, it's not like detailing or anything like that. It's like, that's it's, where I was getting. Yeah, it looks like gold. Huh. I asked their metallurgists. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you uh, paddle your way or flap your way uh, in some cases. Uh, across the surface of the lake, following behind the, uh... <laughs> Fresh stroke is the most efficient stroke. I'm wet. <laughs> Not in a good way. Uh, unless you have a dinosaur tail, then the most efficient stroke is to swing your dinosaur tail to the water. I flick my teethling tail back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as it good. It helps! I can play a little bit like just Looney Tunes it all the way through, absolutely. But yes, you make your way to the shore of the lake. And climbing out onto the sandy shore, it travels up a distance before it hits, like, the, the, literally, like, the, the city streets are just all... Wow. For that whole time. <gasps> Figured it out, it's fine. It's okay. Okay. Oh, no! It's happened before. It's this happened is before, the best time to we'll figure that out. Yeah, yeah. That could have been way worse. Good catch. Yep. Anyway, you paddle your way across the lake uh, and emerging onto the shore, it, which is a, that sort of a lovely, really sort of silty, soft sand, you yeah. know, like a, a, a kind of, almost like the sand you find like in a Reiki garden, you know, as you as your feet plant onto it, it, it pleasantly just makes a perfect sort of impression of your foot as you step in, mm -hmm. step onto it That's out nice. of the water. Um, it's like a lovely kind of golden white. I'm doing that sandals thing where I'm like, it keeps trying to suck my shoes yeah. off. <laughs> yeah. And the beach kind of travels up right up until what looks like a boardwalk, except instead of being made of board, it's just more solid gold. Mm -hmm. And sort of a main stretch carries on down the city with like the, the you know, sort of gold, the sort of like Central American pyramid, sort of like the tiered pyramid. The yeah, 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 exactly. Like, like structures, um, uh, fanning out into the distance okay. and is yes if i kneel for a second on this like boardwalk and mm -hmm. just scratch a little bit with my thumb it's soft like gold <laughs> uh, so you make your way in and crowds of lizard folk the the folk here in the city are richly ornamented not with clothing but with paints and feathers shells jewels gemstones things of that nature you know some have some have them hangling from their horns some have like these intricate purple red and blue paints uh in intricate patterns over their bodies some wear these you know like sort of big feathered headdresses with a you know like feathers coming up out of a skull all sorts of like richly ornamented wares here and a bit of a crowd is gathering around uh, as you make your way uh, into the city. It's it's difficult to read the emotions of lizard folk, but you start to hear some like hissing and growling and 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 grumbling as you as you make your way. But the ones who uh, led you here just continue to sort of like continue on as if not noticing anything. What would you like to do? Why do you want to look at me? I uh, know. Uh, because you could understand them the first time. Oh, I can understand this though. Also. Because both of you understand them. Yeah, what am I hearing? Yeah. And stuff? Mm -hmm. Sounds like crocodile. Mode. Oh, yeah, you speak this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was so excited for it to look sound like crocodile. He could speak this. Well, you know, I just love crocodile. Oh so. my god, wait, does a baby lizard folk sound like a baby crocodile? Yeah. Well, they sound like little lasers. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a sort of a, a, a mixed mumbling of, uh, of things and like, they should not be here. This is sacrilege. Who has allowed this? They look delicious. <laughs> Things like that. Well, we do look delicious. Yeah. They're not entirely all of them happy that we're here. Sort of a mixed reception. That's understandable, I suppose. Honestly, it's kind of refreshing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I miss those simpler times when, like, some people had opinions on us and they were not good, and some people thought we were good, you know. <laughs> Nice. Strangely simpler, simpler times. Mm. Where are we headed? Like, what's it look like we're heading towards? Um, so they keep on, so there's sort of this main stretch, right, that carries on towards the, from what best you can tell, the center of the city in which the largest ziggurat looms, like, uh, twice again as tall as any other structure. The goldest building of them all. Oh, gold. Gold <laughs> A slightly <and> taller <laughs> golden building, which, as we've learned... <laughs> means it's the most important one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> On top of this sort of central ziggurat, this enormous sort of like 
gyroscopic structure wheels around a crystalline structure at its center, spinning in place with like lightning crackling off of it in various directions. But the uh, the ones who uh, first allowed you in seem to be heading straight down the path in that direction. We better stay close, I think. Yes. It would not do to wander off before we are decreed. Inedible. Oh, I wasn't going to share that part. Uh, y- yes. Oh, no, we're going to no, yep, no, yep, yep. Yeah, that's uh, sure. fair game, I think, is a good double entendre. Uh, Let's move forward. So, uh, yeah, continuing your way, you see there are, are structures in here, the likes of which you, which exceed even in complexity, the architectural marvels of the capital city. Things you never would have expected to see in this, in a bog such as this. In between some of the raised ziggurats, these sort of like, rope bridges span the distance between the gaps and you can see various colorful flags and leaflets hanging from them richly decorated you can see like whole families moving in between them uh you pass by one sweeping lane going off to the side which seems to be sort of like a market with like huge you know like whole racks of meats on on uh on display and like you know various heads of animals fully displayed roasting over a fire yeah. Are all of these lizard folk, do they appear to take after the same kind of lizard? They, they look pretty different. Their, their colors range from like deep blues to greens to oranges and reds even. You're noticing like the, the largest of them have more of a sort of dinosaur almost like appearance. And then there seems to be like another kind of tier of them which are slightly shorter that look a little more like, like a little more gecko-y. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm getting at. I'm yeah, like, right. Like yeah, no, there's variation somewhere? amongst them. Yeah, nice. you notice. That's you notice what like, should be. Yeah, like a chameleon guy with mitten hands. And... <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh-huh. He's got to be holding something all the time because mm-hmm. they just they instinctively grasp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're climbing the rope bridges. I'm probably they're under. They're underneath <laughs> the rope. Like, yeah, some yeah, of them yeah. probably don't even need to use like the walky parts of the yeah, bridge. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, like, yeah. Anyway. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and in fact, as you can continue. Uh, Overhead, you hear the rushing of uh, of wind and the flapping of wings as some riding atop pterodon swoop overhead uh, and and pass over you um, with the uh, with the sort of like little geckoy boys on top of them looking over the sides of their mounts, uh, staring down at you as you continue to pass. Um, this place is so cool. We're in so much danger. <laughs> making your way even further in, you can see uh, as you get closer to the main central ziggurat, you hear it like uh, as an entire like monstrous like triceratops with a whole like you know it's got like the wooden rigging like the olifants from Lord of the Rings on its back, and a bunch of the geckoy boys are sat atop it with like a whole ballista set up on the on top of the back of it, just sort of all watching you as you proceed down this main stretch. <laughs> I, I wish That's everyone. Really cool. I wish everyone listening could see everyone's face because we're all just in like various states of. Disbelief. You know, every time we go somewhere, uh, and I think it's really interesting and different, we still keep finding the craziest places mm-hmm. in this world. Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> My dear Dr. Hyros, <laughs> welcome to Jurassic Park. I am a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Do travel and hurts. Ah. Uh, uh, Charles Hyros in the Jeff Goldblum <laughs> I am so injured. Oh. Artists? Artists, someone please. <laughs> Carrying on even further, you get to, drawing closer and closer to the ziggurat, you start to see what looks to be like highly ornamented guards with huge golden headdresses uh, in the shape of various, you know, some of them have like like triceratops horns, other in the shape of a tyrannosaurus head. You know, um, and all of them holding these huge pole arms with these massive, you know, sort of like mace heads, you know, with spikes protruding off of them. The As you approach further and further, the walkway begins being lit with these sort of gemstones that shine with the light of the sun and sort of dabble and speckle the golden walkway before you almost that you're walking on pure sunlight as you begin to approach further and further the ziggurat. And all the while, as you draw closer and closer, the, the, the ones who you initially met who have been guiding your way here 
uh, begin to throw back their heads and raise their, you know, just giant dinosaur heads up into the sky and give this, like, guttural, throaty cry, which the uh, all the guards, you know, sort of lining this walkway begin to respond to by, you know, stamping their their staves on the ground. And uh, as you, uh, approaching now closer, the base of the ziggurat, you start to see, like, uh, emerging on the different tiers. Some of the, the, the smaller Gekui boys, and which you can only assume to be like these feathered priest robes, start taking up positions on the, on the tiers of the ziggurat as you approach, and the cacophony of sound grows louder and louder and louder, until finally you reach the very base of the stairs. And suddenly, uh, in unison, all at once, everything falls deadly silent, and you are again just left with the, the sounds of the forest around you. And all, all the lizard folk take one knee, bowing their heads low. We should maybe also do that. Yeah, I will. One knee. Yep, I will also bow. Bow with them. Huge double doors at the top of the ziggurat open, and a figure emerges and begins making its way down the massive staircase. A lizard folk with sort of golden colored scales that perfectly match the the aesthetics around uh, is descending in this elaborate headdress and a huge staff at the top of which is that same sort of gyroscope that sits at the top of the ziggurat um, uh, in one hand. On the other arm she seems, uh, seems to be holding a shield made of some sort of like ribbed spine shell of uh, like a like a, of a huge snapping turtle. She has trailing behind her a long, elegant robe, which sort of like traces the shape of the stairs behind her in this beautiful sort of like lapis lazuli, you know, that very specific blue that comes from gemstone as she makes her way down. And as she she comes to rest, still at a, 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 at the bottom of the stairs, but still up a few, so she is still raised above you, sort of now kneeling at the bottom of the ziggurat. And she places her staff on the stairs, and as it does so, like a wave of energy washes over all of you and as it does so you sort of get the sensation of like a cool like the wind before a rainstorm or you know the air like charged in that way before a thunderstorm for a moment and then it passes as she looks down at you with these deep emerald eyes right and she looks down at one of the uh the the guards who escorted you here and she looks at them and says from what you have invoked do you mean to say you bring me the wind walker the guard that brought you in like his crest like raises and folds again almost in a sort of like salute but he keeps his head bowed and he says yes the one you told a golden lady he has come at last the prophecy bears out perhaps they can calm the wrath of the titan and then she looks appraisingly at, at the four of you. I shall see it with my own eyes. You have seen things no outsider ever has before. And if you are not who you profess to be, you will see nothing again. Show us your connection to the Lamb. Show us your connection to the Way. What you make us win. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, it must to be win. To be clear, that was them speaking common because they're doing it in their. Yes, yes yeah, yeah, sort of like the yeah. They just kind of articulate their their. You can see like their throat muscles working and their jaw kind of maneuvering like a parrot when it when it parrots speech. Um, is the spell still active? I assume. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a long, that's like eight, eight hours. hours. Yeah, yeah, that's like eight hours. So yeah, I just wanted to be sure. Oh, we can just do it on ourselves. I wanted to make sure that that wasn't traveling time. Of like, no, you're good. You're good. Like, yeah, it yeah. took like an hour to get through or something. Nah, you're good. I'm still gonna wait for Kashek to mm-hmm. lead the charge, though. Mm-hmm. Is the implication that she wants to see all four of us do it, or just me? She just wants to see some sort of demonstration of power. I'll do it to myself then. I will immediately do it. Also, mm-hmm. after I see Kashek do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, same. <laughs> So uh, all of you sort of turning into wind and then corporeating yourselves back to your normal normal selves. I have seen you coming in my dreams. Our people do not dream as you do. 
we are gifted visions in the sky from the heavens themselves. No Kekwala dreams, lest it is an important task come to bear. I know not why the heavenly wind has brought you here, but it has for a reason. Come with me. She turns and begins making her way up. Okay. okay. <laughs> I look at our uh, our escort party who mm-hmm. brought us in. Are they? They're still just bowed low. Um. Thank you for uh, granting a safe passage through your home. Mm-hmm. We do as the divine one commands. You can use comfortable for you. I'll speak in Draconic or Gretchen. I can understand the way that you sometimes speak if you want to do that. That's entirely up to you, though. He replies in Draconic. The Shining Lady has given you a command. Do not dally. You make a good point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just, Boy, you can't get your ass up the steps. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it'd be good for them to know. I don't know if it's It'd be very nice to you. Let's go. I, oh, yes, we're, we're, we're going. We're going to go. That was very nice of you to think that. I, well, uh, clearly, if we <laughs> if we'd been on our own through here, um, we might be pieces. How many steps? Sure. It's pretty. It's pretty far. It's pretty tall. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm walking. What? I'm not walking. Right. So yeah. 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 Sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a really good idea. But like again, <laughs> just my bottom half aesthetic. Uh huh. Right. If there are any shadows, like. Dappling around on the steps. Not at this point. What is Even taller than this building? Nothing. <laughs> I just have something cool I can do. I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Even uh, I see the one. windwalkers are here. All right. How do I do this the different way? <laughs> um, I am what I am. The shadow walkers aren't due till two p.m. Yeah. You gotta wait for that. That one who sleeps in shadows. That's sleep. actually a good point, though. Are we in direct sunlight? Or is this like a dumb jump? Uh, not do I mean there's certainly canopy overhead. Okay. But the sun ba- uh, bears down. It's it's still pretty much the height of day. Yeah. Um, and it sort of filters through the leaves above. Um, and by the time it reaches this point, it's dispersed in such a way that it's just sort of generally light down here. If that makes sense. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, you make your way up the many steps to the top of the ziggurat from with the doors from which she emerged. Uh, and you, as you reach the top, you just see sort of the end of her cloak uh, disappear through the double doors. Uh, and making your way inside, they uh, they just <clears throat> close closed behind you. Inside this chamber is a light with those same sort of like spinning. Uh, it's like a it's like a skinnier detent, and up close you can see. They too just sort of instead of uh, being placed in some sort of sconce like a torch would be, they just sort of float in place uh, against the walls, emitting their light, which do, which is uh, looking at them is sort of indistinguishable from sunlight. Like inside here, looks like you're outside again. This is both like the antithesis of everything about me and like the coolest thing she's ever seen. <laughs> As you enter, she's already made her way back up and, and is sat again on a throne, itself floating uh, a few feet off the air. And she's sort of like sat back with uh, both legs up and crossed uh, in a sort of meditative position. She uh, uh, takes the staff and moves it to the side of the chair and just lets it go itself also sort of maintaining stasis there and floating emitting a, a, a small humming sound, sort of thrumming with uh, sort of like a thunderous power. Um, can I sense what the source of the magic is? Yeah, if you want to, you can give me a uh, give me a arcana, arcana or nature check. Can you ever guess which one? Yeah. <laughs> no, wait, I forgot. I'm actually shit at both. <laughs> <laughs> I always think I'm good at nature. Five. Uh, well, you can't be sure, but Kashek, actually, ever since you stepped in here, I mean, this is well far and away from what you are the sort of natural ha- habitat to which you are inclined or used to. But from the second you were, even from the second you started down the slide, you you were, you were overwhelmed with the sort of natural, like, geomantic magics that infuse this place. I love that you said that. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be relevant right now, but I, I had a feeling and you just confirmed it. So yeah, yeah. Like, I, I almost imagine, like, it sort of, like, 
your oh. feathers kind of poof up yeah. even a little bit just being here. Like this is like th- this is like earth magic. To yes, some degree. yeah, that's, exactly. actually, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, 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 it's exactly. like a, it's like some real raw primordial shit. <laughs> you know what? I, I changed my mind. I'm gonna make this a right now thing. Okay, <laughs> what do you got? Can I make a perception check on the magic? Sure. What are you trying to? Perceive or discern. I want to see if I can hear any earth spirits because I can speak Terran. Oh! Mm. <laughs> oh no, like, it's got to come up at some point. Sure. I got to find a reason. Yeah, okay. Not even really for any reason. Oh, like, that's great. No, that's great. That's great. That's great. Do do insight instead of perception. Okay. Ugh. Nine. <laughs> Not here. It doesn't even have to be coherent, but just like... No, sure. Um, you reach out with your feelings, but what you get, it, you don't get something Terran back. Here, at least, at the top of this ziggurat, the, it feels airier, it feels more mm. celestial. You know, it's like, it's, it's mana from heaven itself that powers this place up here. But whether that's the entire city, or just this ziggurat in particular, you can't be sure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. And so, yeah, so you stand here before this, this lizard queen now sat back upon her throne, and she looks at you all appraisingly again, and she says, So, worn ones, what do you think? You have been blessed to view what none of your ilk have in millennia. Speak. To be clear, she just means another literally another mm-hmm. not lizard. It's mm-hmm. not like... Warm ones, yeah, 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 yeah. But if, if your body, if you can regulate your own body temperature, is basically what she's referring yeah. to. <laughs> if they can use their heat vision on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure We're some everywhere. viper one has. They can, like, uh, yeah. Pardon my ignorance, my lady, but we were not instructed how to address you. Mm. I am curious what you would choose. Something worthy of the respect the lady command. Hmm. And why is it you think I deserve respect? You've invited us into your home without harming us. Mm. This is wit. This is wisdom. You may call me as you wish. Your compatriots who brought us here referred to as the Gold Scaled One. They have many names for me. The All Mother, the Golden Lady, the Heavenly Shrine. These titles are helpful in my dealings with my own kin. But what you call me does not matter, as to say. I do not mean to insult you. It's just you do not know me, and I do not know you. Names have meaning. And since we have no notion of each other yet, what meaning can we know? So until we are bonded, you may refer to me as you wish. You lead these people, my lady. It is my divine privilege. This is... The wisest and coolest woman in the world. <laughs> is there a is there like a palpable vibe shift here? What do you mean? Was she putting on more of an air in front of her? Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. She like put down the scepter. She yeah. took off the robe. She she, like, kind, she kind of did the Jarl set. She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah a little bit. Yeah, yeah. uh huh. I'm okay. Because she feels different right now. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like mm, forgive us our customs, my lady. But in dealings with leaders of our world, there is usually a different sort of deference required of someone at our level. Mm, yes. There is much the manlings and warm bloods do that is strange. Strange to us too. Yes. And wasteful. You have come here. We have not killed you. You may be free to speak as you wish. My lady, we have come uh, seeking what seemed a simple thing. We seek a ship that has gone missing from the coast of the city, uh, Wuledo. Mm. Uh, some people there believe it may be have uh, it may have come under the predations of what they refer to as a leviathan. We hear a different tale from your people. You have come seeking this leviathan. All told, we seek something it may have taken from the ship. I'm in no hurry to put myself or my, myself or my companions in any danger. Though that has never stopped us before. That's also true. As much as we like to pretend otherwise, we are always in danger. 
we are all animals in the end, subject to the predations and whims of the natural world. There is no choice but to be in danger. This is true. Without knowing you or your people as of yet, we mean not to disturb any relationship that you may have with the natural world around you as well. It is not a relationship I seek, nor I believe you seek to break yet to a man. The creature of which you speak is sacred to Kekwala, a serpent of enormous size and great power, long as it lived beneath our city. Its scales are what adorn our halls and power much of our technology. It is an ancient thing, a titan a primordial being, a creature from a time when the earth did not yet have a shape. Privately then, I'm thinking, huh, my hunch was correct. <laughs> we didn't just walk in here and then say, we'd like to kill your god, please. <laughs> <laughs> it took some tea from us. <clears throat> Long has it slumbered deep in the earth. But something has disturbed its rest. Oh, God. I know not the source of its pain, but that it is there is undeniable. It drives it to prey upon your ships and disturb your courses. What is this prophecy you speak of? When the Titan became enraged, I was received from the heavens, a vision. It is sacred to us, and we may not go where it dwells by the ancient laws of our people. We are not worthy of it. And so I received a vision of those who walked here on wind, not by water or earth, and cooled and soothed the wrath of the primordial one. I believe that to be you. So to be clear, they've been talking about this prophecy, but it's not like, it isn't like a prophecy. Not ancient. It's no, like she yeah. like woke up and was like, holy shit, a prophecy. Yeah. It's, it's one from like a few weeks ago. Spread. We're not like carved in the side of it. Yeah. 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 It's like, okay. what, did you think we thought you were gods or something? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kinda, yeah. yeah that'd be, that'd um, be really weird. Yeah, you don't know exactly how long it's been disturbed but yeah she 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 foresaw she got a vision of, of essentially from outsiders coming to suit the wrong yeah. i know not how helpful this will be to your current situation my lady we have a decent idea of what may be invoking the wrath of this primordial one and in our exploits outside of this place, we are seeking to quell that unrest. Mm. But time must be taken in order to do so. And tremendous effort. Mm. Then the visions become clear. I believe our planets have aligned and our destinies intertwined. I believe you will be the ones to soothe the wrath of the Titan. However, to do so is no easy task. You must journey deep below our city to the Hall of Elements, the resting place of gods. This will be no easy feat. We never seem to uh, encounter easy feats in our line of work. You may have gleaned already. I know not how much you know of the outside world, my uh, your ladyship, but we are <laughs> emissaries of no one. We are unto ourselves outsiders in the lands we call home these days. 
somehow representative of an entire republic of people who share very little in common with us. And so it is not for the sake of any sort of political relations we come to you, we find you in this time, simply as travelers. But we will help you in this way if we can, for that is also what we try to do in our journeys. Gifted as I am with divine power, I see in each of you the divine nexes of power. Mana from the heavens flowing into each of you. I think the power <laughs> may be greater than you know. I will permit you to travel to the Hall of the Elements, but be warned, and for this, I am sorry. As pooling at one thread can unravel the entire tapestry, you have come here chasing a small thing and landed in something larger. No warm bloods have been permitted in our city in a millennia. If you succeed, we will be heavily indebted to you. And in payment, we will let you leave. Should you fail, our secrets are too precious to us. You shall die. I am sorry. But this is the way it must be. Believe it or not, we have been handed such terms before. Mm -hmm. We appreciate <laughs> the time we have had so far in your fine city. You may feel free to rest and recuperate before traveling to the hall. Alert me when you are ready to proceed. I love when the NPCs give you that option. <laughs> Where may we rest ourselves, Melanie? Ratata will guide you to a place in which you may rest. I am sorry that fate has brought you here, but there is no fighting against the current. We are all subject to it here. Is there anything we should know of the primordial of the Titan, of how to soothe it in the first place? This I cannot tell you, for if you are meant, you will do. I, we must put our faith in providence now. When you reach the Hall of Elements, to traverse it, you will need to wield the power of gods. The ability to shape the earth and space around you. This the temple will provide. To unlock the power of gods, you will need to solve the cipher, but with keen mind. That should prove no arduous test. <laughs> Grab my scarf. Yes, yes, yes. Love puzzles. Yes, yes. 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 You solve the cipher and receive the hand of gods. The rest will be up to you. Seek me when you are ready to travel to the hall. Rat and talk. We'll show you to a place where you can rest. You are most gracious. Thank you. And she sort of bows her big lizard head. Uh, you turn around, uh, and there's a teeny tiny little little geckoy boy behind you. He's like Robin's egg blue, uh, and he's holding like a little uh, a, a little staff with a sort of like it looks kind of like a sensor bearer from it, and from it is this this really like sweet sort of like tropical uh, like tropical flower scent coming from it. Night of sunrise. Um, and he like comes up to like uh, the, like he's very small. He comes up to like your knees, Kajak. Um, and he looks Tiny. up at you and he goes, Pools! Father Good God! He kind of turns around and begins like, do you know how like when bass looks yes. right across the surface of water, of like their legs just kind of scoot Why would you think differently? Yes, I know, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he no. starts like skittering across the floor with his legs like out to the side. Have you ever seen the video of the iguana on the hardwood floor that can't get any purchases? <laughs> yeah, well, that's it! Like, dragon, but yeah. He can't get, he has to like build up traction, but so he like skitters for a second like a horned dragon and then, and then oh, begins no. to move. <laughs> Inside, uh, Hyros is thinking, I've never had a child who is a lizard. But now's a good time to start. <laughs> but yeah, he leads you into he leads you down sort of a side chamber and leads you into it. And actually, uh, 
well, comfortable is not the right word. There is furniture here, but it's rather spartan. It's still just sort of like, you know, lizards. They don't, they don't see the ones just, who are, yeah, they're it's lizards. rocks to bask We'll be lucky if the beds are literally not a tanning rock. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he leads you into the side chamber, and there is there is furniture per se, but it's all just like really flat, you know, sort of like marble surfaces. Yeah. But yeah, he shows you in and then says, <laughs> This thing will rest off. Would you like food or music? Is it kind of an and or situation? <laughs> <laughs> you may choose what you wish. If you have my lady's graces, you have mine. Is he getting anything in Draconic when he's doing that, or is it just a noise he's making? No, it's just a noise Great. he's making. Food would be really good, but we understand if that's, you know, if you prefer music, we get it. I will bring you. The most choicest, juiciest liberals. Hey, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I I would love if like if like the idiom wasn't coming across. The choicest, juiciest symphonies. <laughs> the other two actually like, we're like ones. okay. <laughs> I don't know which one you're bringing me <laughs> now. And if you prefer entertainment. I will be happy to perform for you myself. <laughs> it's really a shame because his face is so cute when he's doing that. <laughs> but you know how I roll? Like it's a little bit of epic and then it's some clown. Yeah, it's, it's so cute. It's gotta, it's I don't know be. what part of that you thought was criticism. <laughs> yeah, man. No. Oh my god. Yeah, definitely food first. We'll see how we feel after that. <laughs> <laughs> and he starts to skitter back out of the room. <laughs> Have I been pronouncing yes incorrectly? Does it have no. eight syllables? No, 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 Kashak. I think because of the way that they're put together, it's hard for them in common to. What is a syllable? That was actually a joke, sir. I'm not that stupid. Oh, no. <laughs> I try. Hey, Kashak, it was, that a was, good good. That it was a good joke. It was a good joke. I'm so really sorry. Good. He's getting better. He's been, he's been around people for a while. I'm just not great on what a syllable is again, because we live in a... Parts of words. Mm-hmm. Letters. No, no, no. But your name more. is your name is Hyros. The mm. two syllables, Hi, Rose. Sounds. Sounds. The sounds. amount of sounds in a word. Uh-huh. I got that. Great. Just sounds like sounds with more steps. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like letters. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a pretty Spartan room, pretty but windowage. There's no windows anywhere in here. It's completely enclosed, and yet, like as me- as I mentioned, there's still those like s- those spinning sort of like s- sun lamps, for lack of a better word, and so it looks like you're just outside. Hmm. Yeah, like it looks naturally lit. Can we feel? Because we're in the one with the big spinny electric ball at the top. Mm-hmm. Can I feel any of that? Like, are we? Get- is it like? Charged the air in here at all? Popping up our hair. It certainly. I mean, maybe you can't feel it as acutely as Kashek, but yeah, the sure. whole place, like the whole place, feels like right before a thunderstorm. You know, like mm-hmm. the air does feel sort of amped and charged and full. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly. This kind of feels like right before Warden Caden struck me with that lightning bolt a couple times. Who? Mm-hmm. Oh. Donkey guy. The Mad Mage. Yeah, he said his name once. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Or he rather, he said it was a different person, but we found that it really did. Oh, right. These are still medical. <laughs> Everything's medical. Callback. Mm-hmm. When I was bribing that college freshman, <laughs> did I end up getting those coins back? Sure. Did. Yes, okay. did. Cool, so we'll I sell them two silver yeah, we'll say Largely it. out of confusion, he didn't know yeah. what to do with them. <laughs> Kashuk's looking around like, I could spend this. <laughs> After a few moments, uh, Ratatok comes back in, holding, like, balanced on both hands and on top of his head. Of course. Like a huge golden platter with a lot of raw meat on it. Um, and he sort of lays it down. To his credit, he did bring you what seems to be some very choice livers. <laughs> and he just kind of lays it down. And now for music! <laughs> and he runs back out and then skitters back in, pushing, like, this apparatus, which is like these, you know, they look like a bunch of hollowed out gourds. <laughs> Mm. Um, and he just sort of like in like this sort of like big circle uh, of all these like differently shaped like hollowed out dry gourds. Mm-hmm. 
And he like skitters to the front of it and looks at you and like licks one eye and then kind of climbs into it. Josh and he Cash? just he just kind of begins jumping around uh, in between the gourds to produce music. Does this tongue come out when he yeah, does that? Yeah. Yes! Shark's looking at this shit like, finally, somebody that knows how to prepare food correctly. <laughs> By not. We're shaking hands because I'm listening to the lizard lady being like, finally, somebody who's got some wisdom. Ratchetalk, he's like bouncing around between these gourds. Sometimes he's upside down, but like he's like keeping his eyes and he's like, as much as lizards can smile. Like, he's, like, pulled his lips back. So he's showing all his yeah. tiny little conical teeth. Mm-hmm. And he's just kind of, like... Crocodiles kind of always look like they're smiling, so, yeah, like... Right, yeah, yeah, like that. His head is, like, on a swivel like a chicken. Like chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Moving, and his body is moving around the, all the different gourds, so he's, like... Does... <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a pug. Time is yours. Do as you like. Uh, it's a chance to rest and recuperate. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Uh, she just said, let her know when you want to go into that. When yeah, you want to. Sure. Yeah, we're on our own time. Yeah. It's also like, what, noon? Said it was the height. No, because it was. Cause well, we I got to Wilado uh, at like noon. He, You said it was like still. Uh, it's, yeah, it's still dead. Yeah, so we'll say it's like, I don't know, it's approaching evening. Okay. I guess. Um, Kishore, do you have any like tiny fires you can make? I know tiny you're, being the opera. I know yes, you're I do, really yes, good with eating things as they are, but like. I don't know if my body can do that right. I don't have to launch produce flame, right? No, yeah. you can just you can just produce it. <laughs> yeah, okay. And I I'm gonna hold the liver because will fire will bother me, but I will <laughs> have one hand act as a campfire. Yeah. Uh, fire doesn't bother you, but raw liver sure does. <laughs> I have limits. <laughs> I I'm going back to the Rolodex of like her initial backstory, and I think I have eaten raw meat before. Probably. So You've I, certainly eaten Children before. <laughs> they weren't raw. Now you ain't need to bring that up. They were powdered. They were baked. They were dream pastry. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'm taking... Spoilers for straws. Spoilers for Bleep it. I think I'm taking like my sickle or something and just slicing really thin slices off of mine and just eating it raw. Because oh, some I'm wagyu like, liver. <laughs> I'm kind of like... Uh, it's like liver tartare. Um, it is the choicest and juiciest raw liver you've ever had. Now, cool. Madison, who absolutely hates the taste of liver, is going, Ugh! But, uh, Saren's like, kind of still in the mentality of food is food. And also, I don't want to offend these lovely people. So, yeah, I want to <laughs> try it raw and see how it is. I don't want to offend these lovely people, be my hire us. <laughs> <laughs> I just know what my mother's told me, uh, and ghosts will visit me if I eat raw meat, so. Oh, uh, where your mom's, like, you have no eat. pink in the middle, absolutely whatsoever. <sighs> No, you know, but you have to. <laughs> but you have to cook it, or else folk tale. Because we live in the woods, yeah. thing will happen to you, yeah. and I'm not gonna risk well, that. Well, you'll get worms. See, I don't know what those are, but well, does it look like this is hurting Ratatouk at all? Like, is he? Yeah, he looks like he's having a great time. Okay. He's probably a court musician. He does look like he's having a great time. Okay, he's a little gecko bard. He's yeah. definitely the court guy who does that. <laughs> 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 like, oh, I, I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> do you Have know you how tried? many times I've got an itch on my eyeball and I can't quite get it? Have you tried? Oh, why is your tongue so long? It's clear, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Do you know a long tongue? Mm. Where did you go? Um, <laughs> I can't quite get my eyeball, though. Mr. Ratatok, you are welcome to share some of this with us. It looks like you're getting quite tired in there. Her. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you, but I ate last month. <laughs> Are lizards like that? This guy is for treasure this guy purposes. Is. Her- He's two feet tall. What can he need to eat? Powered by liver and conga. Are we going to sleep, or are we going to take a breather and then go uh, cool the wrath of a god? I'm fine. I'm well, a- Kashyyyk made us wind today. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I could use... An extended Chance break. to relax. I need to think on what I may need to do for tomorrow. Yes, it sounds like we're going to be given the powers of God, which really neat, uh, but also sounds like a lot of effort. Uh, but we still should be as ready as we can be. I can also move the earth in, ca- uh, in case we need to. I know she said that. I don't know what the powers of gods are going to be, but uh, from what I've seen you do, um, 
pretty pretty up there. So uh, yes, whatever I, you think you need, Master Fisher. I need time to meditate. So you're gonna do a long resty? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we do, I'm going to ask our performing uh, lad here, Gratikov. Yes. Do you know what? Um, if I wanted to take a walk around, would that be advisable, or would I be set upon immediately? The lad has given you from of the grant. Anywhere you will not, you are not permitted. The doors will be shut. But you may explore. I would not recommend exploring the streets, as you are likely to be eaten. That is completely fair. May I, like, walk around the outside, just on top of here? By all means. Anywhere is. you are not met with shuttered door or gnashing tooth, you are expressly permitted. A different kind of door. The teeth. Very wise, master. Uh, I'm going to carefully go for a little walk. I just want to see. I just want to just be up, up top here. I'm just going to, I'm not going to leave the zigger. Z- um, I'm not going to leave it. I'm just going to have a look around the place. Just I like to just it, it's really nice here. Cool. Would you let me know mm, what time is it? We said it's like approaching evening. It's probably yeah, approaching evening. Mm-hmm. Would you let me know if, if the sun is going down? Oh, sure. Thank you. So yeah, I'm going so to go for a while. Yeah. yeah, just the way we came in, just like not gonna even go below this level. I'm just gonna like emerge onto the I assume because of the tears, you can just sort of walk the yeah. Out of. Uh huh. Yeah. So making your way, and as you notice, you know, you, you kind of make your way out and w- walk your way along the halls. They're not much for decoration. Like you've noticed, they have a, a, a certainly a a, um, a culture of sort of decorating themselves. Mm. But beyond the sort of architecture of their building buildings, they don't do much to decorate. Um, so the hallways are pretty laid bare, other than the sort of rotating lamps and as you make your way along you you find a passageway back outside if that's where you're if you're yeah that's where you're headed and as you notice yeah the sun as you make your way back out the sun is beginning to the sky is turning to turn a little pink and in fact as you notice the the lamps match the shade of the as the sun begins to set the in turn the lamps also begin to dim i was curious about that Uh, (laughs) but yeah you make your way sort of out onto the sort of terrace, for lack of a better yeah. term, yeah, of the this tier of the ziggurat. And from this height, you can see out over the entire city sprawling out below you, and it is gorgeous. The the um, the golden walls of the city catching the, the sinking rays of the sun uh, make it sparkle and alight brilliantly. It's quite a sight to behold. Are we above the entire canopy level of the jungle up here, or are there still trees that might... There's still another, like, top level above you, but then there's sort of like a mixed level of foliage in which you are, like, sort of mixed amongst. So we can't just, like, see forever. We can see the city itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Essentially, yeah. Do I notice any use of wood, really, uh, in, like, decoration or in furniture at all some like not for any buildings yeah. but like i mean you've seen the sort of rope bridges and then when you passed by that sort of market area there were some wooden stalls and stuff but in terms of like architecture no it's all carved from metal and stone and like you you mentioned uh engravings and inlays before are there any sort of like pictography along the walls of the ziggurat on the outside on or the, the outside, outside yeah, yeah there's sort of rudimentary shapes um, uh, there, some of them, like, at a cursory glance, like, most of them seem to be depictions of, of animals, uh, primarily dinosaurs. Mm. But if you want to, like, try to look further, you, you're, you're free to give me a investigation check. My point of inquiry, I guess, I'm looking at mm-hmm. these, because be the, the link, um, making that I can speak to them in their language, which, as far as I know, is the language of dragons, mm-hmm. see if they have any knowledge or any concepts of dragons on any of these mm, great yeah sure or anything like that mm-hmm. sure go ahead investigation i'm very intelligent yay scarf. the scarf definitely helps make it a six oh yeah uh, that's okay. six. so with a six okay great so you begin to sort of like walk along the tier as the sun continues to sink lower and lower and you walk along maybe running your hand along the 
the, and it's very cool to the touch when you lay your hand upon the, the side of the, and you begin looking over things, and at first they seem to be sort of randomly assorted images of animals, but after after a, a little while, they they start to sort of make a certain sense to you. And it almost seems like they start to tell a story. And you're getting deeper, kind of combing over the, the various pictographs along the side. Um, but just as you're sort of, as they're sort of starting to like kind of corporeate uh, in your mind, um, another of those pterodons sort of swoops low over your head, giving you a start. Oh. And you hear a voice come from behind you. Quite a marble no. And as you turn, it is it is the golden lady. Oh, um, yes, your ladyship. I, uh, I, in a former life, I was a humble tradesman myself. Uh, I did not work in such fine materials as these. Hmm. It is my understanding the material has a different meaning in your lands. Oh, yes. Uh, among the Republic especially, it is a high form of currency traded in small pieces. Hmm. I did. To be truthful, I never saw a piece of gold in my life until I took up the adventuring way. It is used, as I understand it, in exchange for services. Yes, uh, it is difficult to explain. And indeed, for much of my life, I was used to trading, as it were, bartering. And, um, but yes, they change uh, little bits of metals for services or goods. Oh, here. In this place, the Kekwala are freed from such shackles. Each has what they need, and each does what they are suited for. It sounds an idyllic life. We are granted a unique advantage. The wisdom of the ancients. The dragons. Those who gave this place shape. I feel for your kind. Bereft of this knowledge, you toil in pain and sweat. I feel for a kind as well. Thank you. I do not wish to overly pry. I have had experiences recently with one dragon in particular. She kind of, she you hear like a jingle as she turns her head sharply and like some of her, like the ornamentation dangling from her earrings clinks as she, her attention is sort of, sort of all of immediately laser focused on you. Oh, um, Simply, and I sort of like gestured to my eye if that's still visible. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was, um, I found myself on the other side of this world, and through the spirits of an ancient dragon long since gone, found myself returned to this. But I still, I feel as though sometimes it is difficult to explain, but perhaps you and your wisdom will understand better. Uh, there is almost a song playing that I can't quite hear or make out the words to. Uh, that may sound strange, but... Many, much like light, color, there are certain spectrums to which we are not privy. Many in the natural world can view these, but those of our ilk, right, they are hidden from which. It is because we have traveled far from the way. We have lost our connection to the earth, to the sky, to the nature that beats within our hearts. The further we tread from it, the less, quite literally, we see of the world around us. I believe you have been sent back. The secret fire breathed back into you. This is a blessing and has brought you closer. You are on the path, Iros. You need only follow it. You have much wisdom, my lady. Uh, you speak of this way. Do your people share fully in your beliefs in trying to find this way of the old ones? It is not a question of belief, only acceptance. The way is the golden path, the true step, the valley between the lofty peaks of fate and choice. It is instinct. It is what we know to be true. Only when we follow it do we find what we are really meant for. 
Your words are a comfort. I know what lies before me. I have been sent back twice by the same power, but... There is an end in sight for me. As there is for all of us. Again, wisdom what you say. If I wish to see more clearly, what must I do? A difficult question. For the way that can be described is not the true way. The way that is easily explained or laid out is not the true way. Yes, that, uh, that makes sense. <sighs> what I can say, Iros, you have been given a gift by the ancients. Something not even I have been privy to. There is a reason for this. Trust your instincts. Trust yourself, and you cannot be steered wrong. I do hope that we return from our journey, my lady, so that I may hear more of your wisdom. I do too. May I confess something to you, Iros? But, but of course. And she like walks back over to sort of the edge of the tier and kind of looks out over the city. For millennia, we have lived here in secret because we do not believe the world beyond is ready for our wisdom. I am one who thinks the winds change. The waking of a primordial speaks of great happenings. I believe the ancients made life on this place to make it a bastion where life may flourish. And when the time comes to put life to its test, it will require all of our strength. Many in the city disagree. They still believe your kind to be impudent, brutish, and false. But I believe you have been brought here to set events to course. I think much may come of our meeting, should you succeed. Should we succeed, I think we would then tell you of what we know and what we have seen. For indeed, there are things moving about which we know little, but what we do know will affect all, whether here in the Republic, beyond the seas even. This Titan, this primordial, if something of its power can be troubled, disturbed by what we have if it is the same as what we have briefly encountered, there's then much to discuss at that time. Your thoughts echo mine. I long for the day when the Kekwala can again show ourselves to bring the wrath of nature and the world down on a foe worthy of its witness. Should you succeed, I believe there may be allyship that would do us all the world of good. Perhaps <laughs> us and our people even more than yours, for indeed it is wisdom that you share. I am glad of our meeting. Is glad the right word? Glad is certainly one of the words. I, <laughs> I am not the best person to tell you what words are right and not. I am more a man of actions. <laughs> but then rest well. Iros, blessed of the secret fire. Thank you for your wisdom, my lady. I look forward to the challenge. She kind of bows her head. With that, I will accept my dismissal and walk back inside. Oh, Vonnegut, you thought we were going to submit to subjugation? (laughs) Have you met my friends, the anti-capitalist eco-punk lizards? (laughs) Because they have it all fucking figured out, baby! (laughs) They've got a god laser on top of their house. (laughs) They said a god underneath their house. They said, we're not making the concept of having money. We're going to bask on these rocks, eat the choicest livers, and fuck anybody who says we're not. (laughs) Whose livers are those? I love it here. Great. Dope. That was sick. Anything else we need? (laughs) Sorry. Uh, At Uh, some point, if the the light is changing, I'm just going to do, like, Echo Kashuk and... I would like to find a spot outside in, like, actual moonlight to meditate. Great, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, so maybe passing high roads. Sir, I was, I was just coming to tell you, no, it's no, getting no. dark outside. That's all right, the lights actually change. I didn't, I thought maybe they would like it to be sunny the whole time. Wow. I know. Wow, that's really cool. It's weird. As the sun sets, the lamp's uh, light again shifts 
to take on the the pearl uh, opalescent shine of moonlight. That's my mom. As you make your way out onto the terrace, uh, what would you like to do? I'm just gonna meditate. It's just I haven't meditated in moonlight in a while, and there's a lot of divine speak happening. I'm sure is. Kind of wondering if it's not time to be like, sorry, mom, haven't called you in a while. How's life? What do you say? Nothing. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm. That's all I mean. Is it's just like, gonna go back to my roots tonight. Great. As you meditate, you feel a cool, silvery breeze rustle across your shoulders. For a moment, the wind rustles and sort of the canopy overhead shifts for a second, allowing a single beam of moonlight to shine down, inside of which begins to corporeate just a sort of faint whisper. Uh, Not taking shape, but you can sort of hear a voice echo around the uh, open air. You are in a place of great power. I can hear you, Sarah. I, it is strange to me, foreign, alien. I cannot bring myself fully to bear, but I can reach you here. I'm curious. To be honest, I didn't expect that to work. That's good news. Just checking in. Um. I sense you are trouble. There are great pieces moving. We will need the power of the divine, as we've been instructed, on our next journey. And to be honest, I was just tugging at the tether a bit to make sure you were still there. I know the powers of which you speak, but they are far, deep beneath the earth, and my light cannot reach, and my power cannot influence. But I am with you always, sir. It's a comfort to know what we've been a bit neglectful of the paths we walk alone in our journey to walk together. Is there anything you need of me? You left my service behind. Indeed to serve me better. Trust yourself. Walk a path laid before you. And do not doubt so. Yeah, okay. I'll finish my, like, end ritual. Anyway. The wind again rustles and the canopy collapses and the moonbeam is again obscured. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after an entire lifetime of just kind of chucking bottles with messages into them into the ocean, it's weird to have somebody write you, like, a six-page letter back in fully legible handwriting. Yeah. That whole, I just, I was not prepared because she was not prepared. She was just kind of like, eh, this might as well happen. You're in a place of power. You're in a nexus. Yeah. Why not? Now now Madison just got an idea. But that'll be an idea for a different time. Mm. That's okay. Yeah. Anything else for the night? <laughs> I'm going to read some porn. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching animal porn. <laughs> it's not animal. <laughs> We're like the equivalent of a church, and you're like, what's going on? It's erotica. Uh, it's not porn. Yeah, they don't also do churches. No, he's the drumbler. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so you're starting a new one, right? Three. Number three. Ah, yes. That's when it gets good. Okay. That's when the plot starts. Prologue. <laughs> Prince Frazander drifted in and out of a bleary sleep, <gasps> obscured only by the cool, dripping water from the ceiling above, making its way first from temple down along his neck and over his exposed chest, cut to bloody (laughs) ribbons by the the whipmaster's scorn hours before. Awakened from his delirious revelry by the the sickening, clanking chains of the metal grate opening, he lifted his heavy head to view his nemesis, General Calenstrea. Her hair tied back in a tight ponytail. Her pleated, dark-stained leather armor rippling in the moonlight that shone through the open window. She t- crossed the room in three heavy strides, grabbing it, uh, Prince Razander about his neck, slamming his back into the cold stone behind him. She, he could feel her warm breath on his face as she whispered her threatening curses into his ear. All you need to do is tell me where the rebels make their camp, and I'll put an end to you. I'll 
finish you myself. <laughs> Those poor workers at the ice cream shop. <laughs> <laughs> Different cold stone, all right? It's not... <laughs> I knew exactly how you went. I was like, don't say it on because I'm not going to get the oh, <laughs> Ma'am, do you want. Ma'am, this is a cold stone. <laughs> you gotta... Can I get Rudy Tootie fresh? Can I get a waffle? I ju- I ju- you just fantastic. said slamming him into the cold stone behind her, and I just imagined well, they're, outside. they're in a mall. <laughs> No, we're out of cotton candy. You can't have it. Oh Ma'am, can you go do this at the build a bear, please? Uh, and it carries on. There. Like yeah, there's yeah, an yeah, anti yeah, right like there. there. You didn't even. Idea for Future Robin. There's a thousand dollar Patreon tier where I just write the entire series of a game of light and shadow. It's just porn. <laughs> Don't look at me like a For a hundred dollars a month. <laughs> you can get chapters of a game in love, light, and shadow. Oh, I gotta take down my AO3 page then. <laughs> Ian's been writing it for free. I'm sorry, I've been doing this for free. Join our OnlyFans. <laughs> Thanks for improvising porn for You're us. Very well. Oh, it's, yeah. my, it's my Steam. There's nothing I'm so, better. I'm so sorry. Erotica. Yeah, it's erotica. Yeah, it's, it's, it's no fun. Please, I prefer smut. It's uh, smut. <laughs> that's what Siri's doing. Yeah. Anything <laughs> else? Anybody? I think we all four of us had our options for the evening, so. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I'm having a jam sesh with. Do you want to play the sitar with him? Carrot cake, yeah. Yeah. Because sex with Ratata. It's better carrot cake. Ratatouille. No. Give me a performance check. Ooh. 19, but hey. not 20. Hey. Uh, yeah. You bring out the sitar, and as you do so, his his big gecko eyes widen even even farther. And you, as you begin to play, he follows, he changes up his melodies on the gourds to follow your lead. And he, like, puts up his little tail, and he, he like, starts... Clicking it back like a meter. He's a metronome! Yeah. <laughs> and you guys give a, a spirited performance. I was a little worried that he was going to be like, What is that awful <laughs> noise? And just like, you can hear like, like alarms going up. <laughs> <laughs> the 20, you even managed to rouse Suri from her porn for a minute. What? As, yeah. <laughs> she heard foreign instrument and went, huh? <laughs> to get a full night rest despite the somewhat uncomfortable lodgings. You uh, awaken as the, um, the the lamps again shift to be a, a bright red of the morning sun. Oh. The time is yours. Cool, I like this. First off, cool. I rise, I put my shirt back on. I bring a massive crater in your chest. Oh. Or a ravine. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you're right. No, you're right. A canyon. Got it. Yeah. Did Ratatok hang out in here with us all night? Yeah, he's uh, he's like kind of passed out amongst his gourds. Shit. Guys, lost in the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know that that's Gross. an adult sentient person. You don't know what he's made of. I know that that's a person who I more or less trust to feed and dress himself. But he's just so cute. Look at him. He is very cute. <laughs> it's like white noise. I think I once. Oh, that's not bothering me. Rea snores. Um, but. I once heard a thing that I think Adrasto said about uh, if the sun is red in the morning. I think sailors don't like it. Hey guys, do I ever snore? Clark! <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, back. <laughs> Row us back 40 minutes. <laughs> she says, each and every one of you was brought here with divine purpose. And I'm like, what and the fuck? And she meant it. What the fuck entity uh, touched Clark? And I could. Fucking bit this guy. <laughs> it's perfect that he's a bugbear because you just forget he's there. We need to get a bell for him. Oh my goodness. I think you would just so, get mad at his throat. I had that thought and I was like, I don't want to bring it up. I don't want to be distracting. <laughs> <laughs> no, Clog, you don't snore. He's the perfect party companion. <laughs> you are remarkably quiet. Clog, I don't think you can snore. Oh, okay, good. Give it a try. <laughs> yeah, that's not snoring. No, 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 no Clog. Oh. Oh, you gotta wake him up. If you die doing that, how can you die for me? This is the point. There you go. I don't mean that. I'm just saying it because it helps get him on track. I'm looking at a very small thing that's asleep and wondering if the noise is going to wake him. That's Person. Okay. He's so awake. I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Red sky morning. Sailor's tape warning. That's what it is. Uh-huh. The scar told me. Whoa. Are we sailing? Oh. No, we're not. Then Great. We'll be good. Oh, we might be. 
Oh. Should we go seek out we her could. ladyship? We should. She's very wise. So making your way, sort of following your way back to that sort of throne room main chamber in which you first came, you find her sat upon the throne. The roof above the throne, a porthole has seemingly opened in the ceiling, and you can sort of catch the rays and you hear this sound, like the whirring sound of that massive sort of gyroscope on top of her ziggurat. And you can see the early morning sun filtering down through, and she's just kind of uh, got her legs akimbo, arms out to the side, and she's just kind of peering up into the morning sun as you make your way in. Does she look like she's in the middle of something? She doesn't look like she's not in the middle of something, mm. but you're free to approach. Is she in the middle of something I would attribute to someone higher up than me at the monastery, you know, like, do not disturb, I'm communing? No, you don't think so. Okay, great. Please forgive our intrusion. You have my welcome to be here. There is no intrusion you could permit. We are seeking you out as you requested. You are prepared to travel. As prepared as we can be, I believe. Before we go, your ladyship, and if it, if you cannot speak of it to outsiders, I completely understand, but what exactly is th- this marvelous construct on top of your uh, beautiful home here? We do not know. A gift left here by the ancients. My purpose as leader is to decipher its great plan and learn of it what I may. Pass that along to the next leader in the hopes of one day learning its secrets. It is beautiful. Yes. I believe it contains with it the secret to existence and all places. That is just a theory. If you are ready to travel below, you may follow me. I think there is no good delaying it any further. If it has to do, we shall do it. Yes. She grabs hold of the staff once again and steps off of her throne and sort of takes a few steps uh, forward in front of it and sort of beckons you with her other clawed hand forward. Come close. Stay close, Clark. I always do. I'm always right next to you. Just making sure. <laughs> I will literally be right here if you need anything. You're the best, Clark. <laughs> so yeah, you kind of gather around her in the middle of the throne room here. Uh, and she says, I too hope for your success. It would be such a shame to devour you all. Well, we wouldn't go entirely to waste. And with that, she, like, uh, again, takes both hands on her staff and kind of uh, slams it into the ground. The top of it begins spinning at a rapid pace, and sort of sickledry in the floor begins to illuminate with the same sort of electric blue light. And you feel the the floor beneath you begin to shift as you begin to descend. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I like this. Down, 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 down. Kind of tingly. <laughs> the air is charged. For a while around you are still just this sort of this cylindrical golden this sort of cylindrical golden shoot down which you travel. But soon you leave that behind and you find yourselves on the the what was once the floor of the top level of the Ziggurat, now a free floating platform descending through an enormous cavernous hall, the walls of which are these sort of electric blue crystalline structures. And in the distance, you can see another, deep underground, another full ziggurat, almost of a size with the one you just left, deep beneath in this crystalline cavern. And as the platform comes to settle in the earth, a walkway sort of winds up to it. And she begins uh, making her way forward, plodding her staff along the ground as she walks. Every time she touches it to the crystalline ground, earth beneath it, a light's a little brighter and then dims and the lights and so on and so on. This 
is where our ancestors first learned the wisdom of the ancients. The making of the world, the truth of the titans and the primordials, and the spawning of all things. This is a sacred place of holy knowledge, guarded once by the titan before it was roused to wrath. If I may, your ladyship, how long ago was it the guardian was roused? It has been some days. Its behavior has exacerbated in the re- in the recent months. <clears throat> Understood. Growing wilder, fiercer, and more wrathful. That may match up with our understandings. Hmm. Uh, and as you begin, as you make your way to the sort of, this one does not have a staircase leading up. This one looks significantly older and more worn than anything above. Um, this one just has a, a sort of uh, set of double doors that at sort of the base level. And as you approach the door, she turns back to you and says, I will say again, to maneuver this place, you will need the hand of gods. With keen mind, the cipher will lead you to it. And once you gain the power to shape the world, you will. The rest is up to you. Good luck, friends. I am glad you have traveled here. And as I learned, glad is the right word. Yes. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. And should you succeed, though it is true the Kekwa'ala are not a sentimental type, please do say hello for me. This we will do. Of course. Mm -hmm. She touches her, uh, like, lightning-thrummed staff to the doors of the the ziggurat, which alight and swing open, um, inky blackness within. This is as far as I can take you. The rest weighs on you. Is it the kind of inky blackness where it is magical darkness, or is it extending so far it's just dark? Like, is it the magical darkness that was in Madame Malfit's mm. wagon, mm-hmm. or is it like... Uh, here, as far as you can tell, it's just very dark down here. Okay, great. Mm-hmm. Can I see anything? Uh, you can just see sort of the, the, the hallway stretching out before you. Then I will... Dancing lights? Mm, okay. With my rudimentary magic that I have, and send a couple of globules mm-hmm. equidistant from each other just to keep light in my way. And then mm-hmm. if we're going to traverse down it, I'll keep like the furthest one back, move it up to the front. Yeah, they do so, sort of relaying down the hallway. Let us go. You descend. Immediately as you sort of cross over the threshold, the door closes behind you, and the air in here is very cool. Making your way down the slightly sloping gradient, again, there are those depictions as you saw on the outside of the ziggurat, but much older, more rudimentary, as if carved not by but by handheld tools, but gouges in the side, as if dug out by huge claws. And as you make your way down, the hallway sort of unceremoniously ends at a flat wall with a simple stone panel set into it. It's just sort of like four by four stone blocks. And proficient and draconic as you are, uh, you can sort of read the tablature underneath. Which essentially just reads to wisdom without intellect is folly. Intellect without wisdom is pride. You must demonstrate both to wield the hand of gods. And as you approach, the stone pallets begin to like, like a train board, kind of shift in place, revealing Uh, a puzzle! All right, so I read this. It said we must demonstrate both folly and pride 
in order to get through. No, no, Wisdom no, and no, intellect. No, no, no. That's close, close. What it says is wisdom and intellect. Oh. And one part, without the other is pride or folly. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Oh, pride and folly. Yeah. <laughs> but, yes. Just Kushek, because Dwarik, sometimes. Mm-hmm. I didn't know him to be I... very folly full. Do you remember that time he went to the walkers on his own? Scarf, what, what, what is scarf? Does the scarf have a personality? Scar- no. <laughs> no. But for Hyros it does. I- Alright, okay. this first one's basically Sudoku. Um, I love it. You have to decide. Uh, no row can have either the same color of dot or the same number of dot. Okay. You have to find out which of these goes there. Okay. Good luck, everybody else. Do I have to kind of make a perception check to see if I hear sand in an hourglass? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't. So everything here is set. Yes. yes. Yeah, yes. that's yes. the only yes. one you're trying to figure out. Okay. So it can't be that one. It can't be that one. Oh, okay. okay. So it's this singular one purple, purple dot. Final answer. Yes. yes. Correct. Well done. Yay. Nice. Here we go. <laughs> oh, oh uh, erased so well. Do you, uh press into that stone and you hear some like shifting behind the door and one level of the door comes down. Whoa. One level of wall comes down, revealing another behind it. You guys figured that out so good. Oh god, you guys are gonna, it's gonna take I'm way small. longer for me to draw these than it is to solve them. That's god okay. damn it. That's okay. That's okay. what That's I'm saying. <laughs> not necessarily true. Because <laughs> they can vary wildly in difficulty. <laughs> Stop. Okay, go ahead. Is this the okay. okay? Same thing, same thing. Okay. This, 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 this. Not this. That one. Well, hang on, you just erased it. No, I didn't. Okay. You did. <laughs> put your whole ass finger on it. Okay, it can't be that one. So put your finger on it. Can't be that one. Or this one. I can't even see it when you put your finger on it. <laughs> Freddy's too good at that. <laughs> yes, it's this one. Final answer. Yes. Correct! Oh, Yay. three. Oh, yes, damn that's, it. That's the letter Just three. as I feared, this is too easy. No, you're doing great. It's perfect. If it's any harder, I won't even know what's happening. <laughs> All right, I'm e- Ian is the only one allowed to guess this next one. Okay. No, I didn't right. hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Hyrus, Hyrus, why don't you try one? Uh, why don't you and Clark try one? Scarf, back me up here. <laughs> Scarf and Clark, back me up. I have a posse, Clark. and I can't do this by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I still have a negative modifier to intelligence. I'm too deep in the in the role play. Which okay, I, go to town. I get. Hang on. Freddy. Freddy. Is that two... Final answer? Well, no, I've, Ian has to do this one. Oh. Oh, I thought <laughs> I thought you were your joke. No, 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 it's fine. Is that your final answer? Two blue? If these are the same color, then it has to be this one. Blue. Correct! Yay! Yeah. All right, well, you know, I did what I could. You did great! Okay. Well, that one... It turns <laughs> We're wise turns and out intelligent. All the wizard folk are colorblind. So... <laughs> So it's really hard for them. And they can't, they have no idea. They're like, dude, what ah, even? They've shit. always, they just don't, they got, they got the grayscale. What are you going to do? Okay. grayscale. <laughs> the final wall piece. Until you are left with a circular piece set into the wall. Well, that's different. At the center of which is a golden gauntlet. Hands of God, so fist of Teddy Gone. Surrounding it, uh, it, it, there is a golden gauntlet with inscribed into sort of like the back of the hand is like a Tyrannosaurus skull. And around, where, in, like in the open maw, is a slight impression, a circular impression into the back of it. And ringed around the gauntlet are four medallions with symbols inscribed to each. And though, like, alien and reminiscent of the iconography you've seen so far, they are each reminiscent of an element. Fire, water, wind, and earth. So what is there to do? It's, like, just set into the wall. Like, kind of, like, set into impressions in the wall. And this is presumably, as you were told, the hand of gods. Yeah. So we do with each thing one at a time. Yes. And presumably each time we put a medallion in the mouth, a little thing happen. 
Or are we making a choice here? Right. Is there one answer? All right. Earth should be first. Uh Uh-huh. Then you should do it, Kashe. That should be. I don't want you to abdicate responsibility, and I just kind of kind of hold my hand up and wiggle my ring finger. I sort of already have a hand of a god, so if someone else wants to take first point on this? Kashe has ties to the earth, I think, the most, yes. Yeah, I'll put the earth one in. Into the gauntlet? Okay, yeah, as you do so, it sort of thrums with power, and the surface of the gauntlet, once smooth, begins to sort of shift like the plates of the earth, and running in rivulets between the plates as you place the earth medallion into it are like streaming lines of soil that kind of thrum around it. Do you put it on? I cannot. I don't have two fingers. The gauntlet may <clears throat> accommodate for that. I'm just looking at this thing. It looks pretty magical. How many fingers do wizard folk have? Enough. Um, that, that's a good question. I think they have five. Depends on how hungry they are. I guess so, yeah. Or if they're chameleon. Um, but yeah, lifting it back. out of the impression <laughs> in the wall and placing it on, it thrums for a second and then, in fact, does sort of shift and transmogrify itself to fit your hand. Uh. <laughs> um, and with the earth medallion still in it, yeah, the rivulets along the gauntlet thrum with, like, soil and bits of rock. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thrusting your hand forward, you feel energy course through your body, channeled from the very item itself. He pops up. And you are blasted back as a stream <laughs> of, like, soil and rock blasts out of the palm of the gauntlet. Blasting into the wall and like propelling you backward Whoa. like a cartoon character holding up like a like a fire extinguisher. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got him. He's so light. Quag is coming your way. Oh my god! Oh my god! That's Pinging exactly around what the Freddy wanted to happen. <laughs> Just hanging around the room. He's too curious. Um. Yes. Yeah, so, but yeah, it seems to have the ability to eject the element placed into it. Go ahead. Doesn't get anything. Wow. That um. That was really neat. I take the other medals. Uh, Removing all of them from the wall, you again hear sort of and the circular tablet begins to roll away, sort of sliding out of the slot and revealing behind it a dark chamber. This time, not just simply dark, but magically dark. And it's sort of like... Like like a, you know like those old like Majora's Mask sound effects, uh-huh. like the grinding earth that like makes its way off to the side. You were left with the gauntlet and the four amulets. Do we each take one? There's four of us and Clug. <laughs> I'll take the water one. That makes sense. I think my scarf once told me that the moon and water make sense together. Yes, that's why I can already shape water. Oh right, that's right. Because yes. <laughs> There's, a, there's an explanation for it if you'd like, but I think we're in a bit of a time crunch. That's your entirely fair. I don't know. Me next? I, I guess, yes. You have your choice of wind or fire. I'll take fire. Sunbrayer taking fire. That makes the most sense. Hmm. That's it. Sun and moon gaze taking their respective elements. We love a theme. And I will take the air. And Ian is clean. Yeah, I think that would be. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Making your way into the chamber. Yeah, Hyros is like the only one who doesn't have like an element that makes dedicated sense, so I'm oh, more than happy to take those. <laughs> you feel bad. Oh, oh no. Oh, 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 I'm just happy to be here. There must be a blood one in there. <laughs> do you remember what? Fine, I'll take it. Okay. Good luck. You're in. I get so nervous when I have to do puzzles. All right. You make your way over the threshold of the this gate previously housing the Hand of Gods. You make your way into the chamber. In this next chamber, it is incredibly dark. Even those of you with dark vision cannot see beyond a few inches in front of yourself. Hey, God. However, across the distance, there is a faint light emanating from a sort of bright gemstone in the shape of a crescent moon, shedding a dim, dim light, illuminating directly beneath which is the stone image of a bat. You step into the room, and so that's all you see. What would you like to do? Yeah, Stradcula. 
don't like yeah, that. I, I am actually holding Zuri's hand. Would you believe it if I was actually... I didn't mean to even combine Dracula and Strahd. I meant to combine Chocula and Strahd. <laughs> I buy that. Yeah. Um, That's it. Yeah. So, How uh, big of a bat? I'm sorry. This room is dark as it's shit. It's pretty high, and the face is pretty big. Yeah, across the way. Because I'm a really big It's like, like the face of it. The face is maybe like... Like two meters across, maybe. <laughs> so why are we? Because I'm a tiny pterodactyl. Why are but we? I'm a huge bat. Is the because the, uh, the the moonlight okay. illuminates that the stone face right beneath it. So I'm in like defensive position, kind of holding on to Suri's hand, mm-hmm. and just as a reflex, I want to tap into like my my jitterbug walkie-talkie to my mom. Mm-hmm. Is, is this you? You're nothing. Uh, that's, she that's did more, say that's more what I'm used to thinking. Okay, it's really dark and I can't see it. Usually I can see pretty well in the dark. Is the iconography seem malicious? It, it kind of looks like Aku from Samurai Jack. Oh, that's pretty ah, malicious. With like the yeah. exaggerated mouth and the crisscrossing teeth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nice, yeah. friendly. It's yeah. fine. That's, that's well, a nice okay, that's, this is good to know. Does it look like a specific type of bat? I mean, with those teeth. Okay. okay. Possibly a vampire bat. Oh, that's a bat. Kashek, I have a bit of an idea. If you can manipulate Earth, and that bat is made of stone, I don't wonder if perhaps he would like to be outside in the real known world. You've lost me. Well, it's, you it's know... It's daytime outside. Oh, shit, you're right. I was thinking that that was like a hole in the ceiling and not a... No, 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 it's, it's like a, it's why artificial. It's like a yeah. gemstone. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Sort of like the, the scales in the, hall, in the hallways mm-hmm. earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's dark in here. We can't see anything. I start walking. I would prefer if you didn't. Well then. Oh, well, I, I, you know, you have to make something happen. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make something happen. I Jack, are you trying to push on Clark? <laughs> 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 I, I am offended because he's not I... moving, but I do hear you <laughs> grunting a bit. I don't. <laughs> what happens? Oh, it's very heavy. <laughs> I let go of Sarah's hand. Mm-hmm. What happens if I try to shadow step anywhere? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Where are you trying to go? I you're should... only you can't see more than a few inches in front of your face. It's like magically dark in here, and your only point of reference is like the statue and the the gemstone emitting like the the artificial moonlight. I can go up to sixty feet, and to justify mechanics, when I usually do this, I think of it as kind of like being one with the shadow and then appearing in it a different mm-hmm, place. Mm-hmm, 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 so mm-hmm. can I try while I am melted <laughs> to feel as far as I can go or 60 feet, whichever one is. You're... I mean, you could, yeah, you, you just want to go like forward 60 feet. Okay. You do so. And you, you sort of vanish and reappear Closer to that artificial light, but still surrounded by inky blackness. But as you teleport forward, you kind of like whoop, drop down, but like a foot, uh. right? From where you were relative to like standing earlier. Huh. Do you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like if you go just straight forward, you like whoop, down a foot. Kishak. As you look down, you are standing not on the sort of golden floor as you were before, but as you look down, now it's sort of like this tiled sort of mosaic. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Kshak, hmm. can you see me at all? Can I see them? No. no. Can you he- see or hear me? So if I'm answering you... <laughs> yes, I can do one of those. You can control the earth. Yes. Would you mind perhaps trying to point the crystal in the direction that my voice is coming from? Can I fly up there? Yeah, you can fly towards it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? He said I towards, I, towards it. I don't yeah. like that we're all separating right now. I don't like that at all. Yeah, I was going to step forward and I said, don't do that. And then everyone And then everybody else goes. decided to go somewhere. Well, then I, Madison realized that we have to instigate in order to solve problems. You problem. should still be able to see me once I get closer. But we're still separated. Yeah, so you, you lift up off the ground. You fly up towards the, the sort of artificial gemstone. And approaching it, yeah, you can you can fly right up to it and sort of even land on the, the top of this sort of okay. bat statue. Uh, and as you do so, I mean, the light grows brighter. You maybe have to shield your eyes a little bit, getting really close to it. But then maybe you, like, kind of swivel your head around and look back towards the room. You can't see your, your allies. 
but in the thin tracing light of the gemstone light, you can see, following the, the trail of the light from the dreadstone, you can see that same sort of like tiled mosaic that I described before. And there is also a pattern on the floor in the same shape of a crescent moon. Can you see me? No. Okay. Is there any clear way to move it? Like swivel the... The gem? No. Yeah. Forgive me the joke, but it was a bit of a shot in the dark. How are we doing I, over there? W- we can instigate, but also we can talk about things first, instead of just running off in separate directions. Can I see the tiles on the floor now that I'm on them? Is that... Yeah. You want to inspect them closer? Um, it appears that once you step down here, you can see a bit more. I'm sorry. Just, yeah, you can see them if you, like, lean down, you know oh, what I mean? Okay. Yeah. I just don't want to get lost or anyone hurt. And then I'll teleport back okay. to where I thought Sarah was. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That's all right. I think I know the answer here, and there's no justifiable reason that Kashek should know it. Let's see. What do you think it is? Can Kashek make some sort of check to have a sort of... Epiphatry? Epiphany. Epiphany. <laughs> well, <laughs> can I roll to solve the puzzle? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Just, just... For me to even look for what I think. Well, what do you think it is? For Kashek to have a thought that Freddy has had. Sir, sir, (laughs) Kashek, do you see any reflective surfaces? Did I while I was down there? Uh, no, but do you want to investigate the floor a little more? Yeah, uh, I'll take the step forwards from Surrey. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, so you take a few steps away from Surrey, and again, you feel that slight drop. Yeah. Like a foot. Mm-hmm. And again, it's that really smooth ceramic tile here on the floor. Reminiscent. It reminds you of in the Temple of Kernudos. Ah. The pool. The fountain. Uh-huh. Like that it's like that sort of smooth tile that lines pools. Uh-huh. I have a mirror, Kashek. So if I'm understanding this correctly, the Ooh. area that the light is shining on is visible to me. Yeah, you can kind of, like, since you're up there and you have that vantage, you can kind of see where the light is pointing, and it is, from your vantage, slightly illuminating a similar, in that same tile mosaic, a similar crescent shape on the floor. Sorry. Yes? Do you see where the light is shining? Um, I can see the beam, right? Mm-hmm. Sure, yeah. Uh, I can see the direction it's going, yes. Try to stand in it. Okay... From your angle, like, you can see it, Kashek, because you're up and looking down at it. And from your angle, it sort of dissipates into the blackness, so I don't know that you could find its origins from below. What is carry weight? Um, 15, 15 times, times your strength. Your strength. <coughs> Sorry, uh, Sorry. Do, do you just want my mirror? Or it's small. That could work, too. <laughs> or you can pick me up uh, if you'd like, but... I can hear her. Mm-hmm. I fly to Surrey. Okay. I'm not sure the floor is reflective. It's smooth, certainly. I, you can't see me. I'm raising my hand, though. You said, because you did, the, the tile is like the pool? Yeah, it does sort of remind me of the temple. And there's a dip down? Yes. And we have a gauntlet oh, that if you oh, put a medallion oh, in. Oh, 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 so that was right. my next step. Yeah. <laughs> Kashek, we might need the other medallion. We, yeah, but you you have... each grab one. Oh, right. Uh, well, uh... I got it. <laughs> Do you need the water one? You have it. That's what I mean. Yeah. You should... I should okay. Do it. Yeah. So you fly to Surrey. I, I still I... want the mirror. You got it. <laughs> That's okay. It's, yes. a bird, it's a bird thing. He just wants the mirror now. But... Well, I'd like it back. It's part of my... So what's the plan? That wasn't an idea. I I think I know where you're going, but I don't want to get ahead of you. Yeah, what's the plan? That's what they call a desert bargain. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I can't. Uh, Shaq, Shaq, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, Here, come. I'll give you the medallion. I try to go to her. Yeah, you do so. All right, I take my earth thingy out. Earth out. Water in. Pocket. Sure. You, and 
Yes. I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you like get, a jetpack. Um, oh my god, it's Super Mario Sunshine. Is, he's already able to fly. Yeah. So. <laughs> Produce your hand forward, and again you feel that cha- that power channel through you, and a cool jet of water springs from the pond and begins to splash on the cold tiled floor below. As the water spreads out, it does begin to pool and move up that slight little divot. And as the water collects... He's so smart. (laughs) As the water collects, making a reflective surface, it catches the light from the uh, moon and illuminates the entire chamber in pale moonlight. Oh, so the light was already going into this pool. Yes. Yes. Oh, I was, I added a step where I thought it was like going off to to like the side. Oh, yeah. You thought it was the Earth Temple. No, the brain took over. I was like, where's the mirror? (laughs) I want to do that. That shit's hard to do in D&D. You know what I mean? Yeah, you get it. That's where I was like, oh, I get it. We have to like, he wants to be, he's in the dark because he's a bat. He wants to like not be in the moonlight. We were given a gauntlet that does a thing. Yeah. And my heart, my brain was stuck on, you're going to need Earth first. And I was like, okay, stone. (laughs) <laughs> but yes, uh, so as it illumin as as the this chamber is now bay, as the light from the the gem is is uh, reflected by the surface of the pool now filled with water, the room illuminates with pale moonlight, oh, nice. and more is revealed to you. <laughs> the enemies. <laughs> <laughs> They were all standing there going, are they going to fight? Bat! <laughs> the golems. It's uh, no. So in the center of this pool. There is another sort of raised dais, ah. on which is an enormous, again clad in gold, sort of brazier with ancient, uh, at this point, like semi petrified wood still in it. You also see up at the top of the room what looks to be, almost looks sort of like a windmill. For all intents and purposes, a turbine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like, yeah, 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 yeah. There is also, you see, all, then also the full figure of the bat statue is revealed. And he sort of has, you know, he's kind of like got his face, he's got his wings kind of curled like this, his uh, gaunt face just kind of staring out into nothingness. And the wings are actually made of sort of thin membrane. You don't know if it's plant or something, but even in the still air of... Fuck. Forget what I said about the turbine. That was in a first draft. That was an earlier draft. Right? Okay. It doesn't exist! Yay. Remove it! Cut that, cut, cut that, that, cut that. It's cut. cut. When you, as you look at the wings, the mem- even in the still air of the chamber, they rustle slightly. To one side also appears to be like stones protrude from the far wall, forming sort of a, a makeshift, a, a, a sort of cave. That's what you see. Uh-huh. So there's the bat statue, the brazier, uh, the moonlit pool, okay. and the cave. Now, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> but when all you have is a giant pile of highly flammable wood, uh, and a gauntlet that shoots fire, I assume. It's a brazier, that's where it's... fires go. I've got a thought. Use the fire on the brazier, yes? Yeah. yeah. Uh, fire on the brazier? <laughs> Excellent. Water out, fire in, you point it, power channels, and yes, uh, from your palm alights a stream, a jet of flame, which hits the wood in the enormous metal brazier, and it alights, illuminating now in the entire room, not in moonlight, but sunlight. And as the room brightens, the statue of the bat, you sort of hear a creaking, and its wings close a little bit to cover up its eyes. Oh. But then, a jet of water extrudes from the bat's mouth, spewing onto the brazier in front of it, immediately dampening it, and the moon is again plunged into moonlight. Oh, oh. So he doesn't right. like that. We need to deal with him first. <laughs> and Here's the wind. <laughs> At what? The... Membrane? The wings? Yeah. Those wings look like they want to fly. Okay. Yeah. I was doing a Freddy and adding a step. I was like, it's a hot air balloon. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, I'm Sokka Water Tribe. <laughs> <laughs> We're all like, how can we make this yeah. a couple? Fire out, <laughs> wind in. Point at the bat. Yes. You gotta be stupid. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> this time, uh, emitting from your pond is a jet of wind flowing over the membranes of the bat's wings. And as, it do- as the chamber is plunged into moonlight, they again move. So its eyes are unobscured, and as the wind hits the wings of the bat, they begin to 
and like it like a Disney animatronic, the whole statue like begins to shift and move about the room, twisting in the air, turning upside down until it kind of like passes behind the wall of this this these rocks coming out of the room until it now rests upside down in its cave. Wow. That was really cool, Trevor. <laughs> that was really cool. So you're scared of bats. Yeah. Thank you. That was neat. How if, does that work? If I had more positive feelings toward bats, this would be really cool. <laughs> oh, it's not their fault that Strahd was a dick. <laughs> I think maybe we try the fire again. <laughs> fire again on the brazier. It alights. The room is plunged into sunlight. And as you look over towards the bat in its cave, its cave is incomplete. And as the room alights, one stream of light passes through and hits it right on the face. And again, the wings cover the eyes, water spouts again, and even from that position, lights out the brazier. Water first, then air, earth. We must finish the cave. Plug the hole. That. That. You guys get it Yay. at this point. Yes. Yeah. Uh, fire out, earth in. Yeah, you emit that stream of rock and soil and plug up the hole of the cave. Earth out, fire in, I assume. Light yes. the brazier. Cave is covered. The, uh, the, it does not cover its eyes. Set in its cave. The brazier alights. And a door at the far end in the light. There's another of those, like, spinning scale lamps. A light to the light of the blazer. Brazier. And your way is granted. You could make an escape room out of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. There should be a treasure chest somewhere. <laughs> oh, it's behind the waterfall. Carrying forward? Yeah. Come along, Continue on. Yeah. The massive bat happily at roost in his cave. And you continue on. As you pass over this threshold, the gauntlet responds. And the eye socket of the Tyrannosaurus also shifts and dislodges. That there are now two of these impressions Uh, in the gauntlet. We get to combine. Lava bending, anybody? Graspers? (laughs) Kashak is a grasper. The next room. The grabby claw that the T Rex had again. The next room is a long, uh, an open chamber descending from the sky is strange apparatus. Something like you would almost expect to see in Bernard's workshop. A long series of glass pipes and tubes. Uh, one of them... Oh, where's my pen? Through. Take the pipes so that the the goop can, the go, goop can go through. It's not goop. <laughs> it's slime. Oh, it's man. sludge. It's only goop. Uh, it's for certain reason. <laughs> so here's the opening. One of them carries on straight, but another travels up into an intricate series of sort of interconnected pipes oh. that carry on yeah. upwards to. What looks like a turbine on the ceiling. Yay! Oh, there it is! That's the first time I've heard of that. Water. Uh, fire? When you make water hot. Oh. So what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> fire and water? Yes. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck! Uh, yes. Fire and water you place into... And so I should have mentioned before, yeah, as you put each medallion, like when you put the fire one in, those rivulets of the gauntlet blazed with firelight. Uh, when you put the wind in, there were currents of air running through the rivet. It's like sort of like like Death Star trenches along the gauntlet, uh, right? Uh-huh. It's water with medallion with water, etc., etc. As you put both fire and water in, it at least releases a cloud of steam. Uh, what would you like to do? Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> Damn it, fuck, I'm always trying to make this shit harder, but you guys are too good. It's great! Um, so yeah, you hold your palm up to the outlet of these, like, 
contorted pipes. Uh, and steam blasts in. And instead of carrying along this straight tube as water or wind might, the steam <laughs> rises, carrying through... Friday's too fucking good for this shit. Uh, carrying through the pipes. I also said it, but all right. Uh, yeah, no, no, you, you, no, 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 no. you are all brilliant and beautiful Thank and very you. good looking. Thank you. <laughs> that part's yeah. That's all right. I'm the not fire room, we have to take the uh, Fire Lord's banding away. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a dragon turtle here, though. That we, I have to talk about uh, this. Yeah, so the steam carries up through the glass pipes, fogging it as it travels along and begins to turn that uh, turbine. Um, and as it begins to spin, the floor beneath you begins to rock. Um, and, the ch- and, and on the other side of the room, half of the floor works itself away. And rising up out of the pit below, a conical shape rises and rests. A conical shape of, uh, yeah, of uh, solid gold. So it's yellow. Yeah. It's gold. The cone. Huh? Yeah, like, you know, you small on top and then it kind of goes down, kind of like the pyramids, but instead of the sort of tetrahedral shape mm-hmm. of their pyramids, it, the sides are smooth. What would you like to do? Cone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, you say, you can say cone about it. About it. <laughs> can we walk up to it? Yeah, sure. What else is in this room? That's it. That's Just all the cone see. and the tubes? Yeah. There are the pipes ahead. And now the conical uh, contraption resting before you. Well, if the gauntlet just wanted to use fire and water, it maybe it wants to use the other two. Uh-huh. Tornado. With, is what earth and air means. With stuff in it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be a sandstorm. Sandstorm. If it That's sort of... How does that go? <laughs> 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 I don't know a bunch of sandstorms. Give me them. Oh, here. Okay. Just, well, yeah, I just gave you this one, and you already have the earth one. Right. <laughs> what so does what, the uh, surface of the cone look like? Just completely smooth? It's very smooth, yeah. Okay. Uh, air and earth. Air and earth. Uh, as you place air and earth inside, the reveal is again open, and it's, yeah, it looks like a sand stream Neat. whipping through the trenches of the gauntlet now. It'll, like, smooth the cone? Smooth. Maybe it'll unsmooth. It's quite smooth. <laughs> That's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a statue hidden inside. I cast blast. unsmooth your cone. <laughs> <laughs> no, my cone. <laughs> so rough and irritating. It got everywhere. Oh, oh okay. cone. Uh, I'm still not sold on what we're supposed to do here. Yeah. Yeah. Neither I'm am I. A cone has presented itself. A cone has presented itself. But I've walked up to it. Blast yeah. the cone. Is there any kind of writing anything well, on it? I didn't touch it. Can I look up? Above the cone where the point is pointed? Sure. Um, give me a perception check. Mm. Cut. 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 Uh-huh. 21. The top of the cone is an open chamber. So at the top of it, like, it's an open sort of circle, which... Ah. Uh, and then the, the ceiling above the opening of the cone is blackened and charred. Never mind. Huh. I'll take that back. I think ooh, it, ooh, so, ooh. I, I'm having trouble picturing this. So, cone, and it's kind of like leveled off at top with, an, with a sort of flat circular opening at the top. Okay. And then the ceiling above the cone mm-hmm. is blackened and charred and okay. like sooty. I've never seen one, but I've heard about them. If you have a cone that makes soot happen, you want earth and fire. I was literally like, uh huh, it's like a giant incense cone. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, no, that would be stupid. Earth and fire? You had to get it in. As, uh, as you plug earth and uh, fire in, the rivulets run red hot with magma. Liquid hot magma. <laughs> Liquid hot magma. Since we're underground, it is magma. Yeah. <laughs> but where do I put it? Start blasting. Um, how, can, can well, we how big the is the circular opening? Uh, two, three feet wide. Oh, okay. Can we, Anyone can, can get we up there. The well, I like, think you can just light it. Just yeah, I fly up and sploosh the cone down the bottom, down so, right down the top. Well, don't get in there. Oh, no, 
Yeah. Great. Uh, you so yeah. Brace your legs. <laughs> uh, as you thrust your palm forward this time, Kashek, liquid hot magma bursts from your pond and funnels down the opening of the cone. And uh, a- as the stream ends, you hear a rumbling. The metal of the cone begins to glow, burning red metal hot. It looks like um, I want to touch it. And as you clear away, like a volcano bursting ah. forward, uh, sh- sh- shots of magma flow up, b- uh, blasting into the ceiling and then falling down and moving down the, the smooth sides of the cone, find two sort of rivulets on the far side and begin moving towards a door on the opposite side, alighting it. And again, you hear... As another chamber opens. See, the thing is, if they were any harder than this, we would never get that. (laughs) I'm worried about, like, the belly button on the dragon opening, and I'm like, oh, God, we gotta do three at once. (laughs) It's a T-Rex. Continuing forward. Moving inside the next chamber, things become swelteringly hot. Chamber is now filled with lava. An enormous caldera sits before you. On the far side, you can see another doorway, but in front of you is a, essentially a lake of lava spewing forth from the volcano in the previous room now. What would you like to do? Well, we definitely want water well, involved. I think we just want water. I think so. If that doesn't work, we'll yeah. try another one. Just water? <laughs> A jet of a, a jet of water shoots, steam. Uh, shoots from the uh, from your palm, but before it can even approach the surface of the lava, due to the massive heat, uh, it evaporates into steam. Well, I think you want earth so mud. Anything oh, I was from thinking Minecraft. Water and earth. Work. Yeah, yeah. The rivulets open, and again, like like a uh, uh, clay seems to slowly, viscously move its way through the channels of the gauntlet. Now, right. and as you shoot the mud forward, it connects with the surface of the lava, but it's still too hot. It like bakes and turns mm. into clay, and like just sort of dissipates over the surface. We fight fire with fire. Kishak. Just humor me and try water and air. Oh, yes. That'll make the wind do things. Water and air? I think so. Because that way, maybe, it will make the entire room cooler and, or something. Plugging in water and air, running through the rivers of the continent now are cool ice. And as you cast well, your yeah, hands forward, a jet of ice shoots forward. And indeed, as it incor- as it touches the surface of the magma, it cools, creating that sort of like black, you, you know, like when magma cools. You oh, know? yeah. And yeah, as you like sort of carve your uh, hand forward, uh, it makes almost a bridge of sorts of this cooled magma surface that you can walk across. And as you get to the far side, the, the doorway... Uh, under the intense heat of the magma is superheated. Address this was telling me about weather. Oh, I was thinking about the eagles coming to rescue Sam and Frodo. Who are they? Uh, a band. <laughs> Who's they? <laughs> oh, they're quite cool. <laughs> the door is very warm. Yeah, Sam and yeah the door is uh, glowing. Salmon and Gar Frodo. <laughs> the door is glowing a bright orange as it is superheated from the, the, the magma now. Now try the wet and the hard. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's my new favorite Fast and Furious spinoff, the wet and the hard. <laughs> and I'll do, it's ice again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, why would we change it? It's just... Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Why it's ice again. It? It's ice again. Uh, yeah, just to avoid another 50 minutes of uh, trying to you know, rule r- 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 that. Yeah. <laughs> so blasting the door also with ice. Because you could have done another one combination to get it. It's, anyway, anyway, here cool, we go. Yeah. Here we go! Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here we go! So it's ice again. So yes, the door cools and... Ooh. Another chamber opened. Yes. If it were wind and earth, would it make uh, sand, which would then be glass? Oh, that would have oh. been cool! Nice. My uncle taught me that. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Episode title, Doodle God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been thinking too. Okay, so icing the doorway, moving into the next chamber. The temperature drastically changes. Oh. Now it's freezing in this next room. Doesn't bother me much. 
And as you enter in, like, mm. there is a uh, a sloping descent in this room. And on either side are two massive pillars. And as the door closes behind you, sealing off the heat from the magma chamber beyond, now these two pillars, on the, on the bottom of which are sort of these two metal sleds, slide down the icy surface of the of this descending floor and <laughs> slam into the wall at the bottom. Like to either side of you now, as they move, there are two kind of s- switches on the floor mm-hmm. that now <laughs> raise up. Yep. And the door at the far end of the chamber, which was open, <laughs> also... Uh, behind the, on the walls on either side of you, behind uh, the two switches, are those same sort of crystalline structures, um, sort of like a fragmented, uh, how does it, almost like a graphite kind of color, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, behind the switches lining the walls. We used fire and water. We used earth and fire. We used. Wind. wind and water, and we could have used earth and wind. So what's the combinations, unless I don't know the machinations of Trevor's mind? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we need to get those switches down. And if we can maybe cause the ceiling. Mm-hmm. What can wind and fire do? I don't think it's going to be helpful here. They would do damage. Okay. And melty, maybe. I assume it's icy in here. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Oh, if we melt the ice, then. Yeah, perhaps. But that would just need fire. Oh. I'd try it. Uh, try the wind and fire, perhaps. Uh, wind and fire, yeah. or just fire? Wind and fire. Putting wind and fire into the gauntlet, the rivulets now cackle with electricity. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Maybe just fire that. Yeah. I don't know no, 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 no. Mm, I right. like that. Oh, if it looks like graphite, it might conduct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm having trouble picturing it, but I'll do that. <laughs> not not picturing the answer. Just pick. I'm still kind of confused with the room. So, yeah. So it's like you're doing it. So it's like you came in here. The room slants down like this. Right. The pillars were here. As you came in, they slid down to the bottom. Right. So now the pillars are down here. Uh, there the switches are on like grooves on the side of the room that were previously depressed. Previously depressed with the pillars, right? And as they move, they like came up, which made the door at the end of the room right. go back down. And, now and there above, are... on either side of the doorway, are these graphite kind of crystalline structures. Does that make sense? Oh, I, I heard above, and I thought you meant like directly above the switches. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Hit them fuckers with some electricity. Lightning is the coolest. As you do, casting your hand forward, this time a bolt of lightning kind of strikes out. Uh, and the crystals alight. And uh, as they glow, tendrils of sort of magnetic force lance out, grabbing hold of the metal sleds neath the spires. Yay! And it begins moving back up the slant I mean, all the way. kind of magic that is. That's really cool. <laughs> That's back. What uh, is that? Well, and we're repeating that on the opposite side. Yes, both pillars move back up. Depressing the switches again. The hallway down at the bottom of the slant again opens. Another chamber clear. Good job. That was my favorite combination. <laughs> that was That's cool. really cool. <laughs> wow. Cool. Let's be careful, yes. Making your way forward. At least we can see. I kind of want to slide. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're underneath pillars, so you could slide down. Yeah. yeah. Entering this next chamber. In here, a skeletal figure sits in the center of this of a round chamber. This the skeleton is sat, but it's but sitting sort of upright. With, you know, sh- arms slumped and head, you know, shifted to one side. Like a dead thing might. Like a dead thing might. Mm-hmm. Behind it, a massive, empty hourglass. Perhaps we fill it with sand and then turn it so he's got more time? You can't have this. 
That sounds like a good sand. idea. So that's earth and wind. Sand courses through the gauntlet. You fill the hourglass with with sand, turning back the sands of time itself. As you become a person. And magical energies swirl around in the skeletal figure. Flesh begins to corporeate back against it, and then sinew, and then scale. It was a lizard skeleton. My brain gave me a human skeleton. I'm so sorry. Ah, I shouldn't specify. That's okay. It's a lizard skeleton. Yay. Turning back the, the, the sands of time itself, the figure again corporeates. Still a little ethereal, but the figure then turns to you. You have passed the trials. You are worthy of the power of the gods. And you have gained admittance to their court. And they float over to the doorway placing one hand against it and the final door. You have passed the trials of the elements. You may proceed. Yeah, I'm making travel lots. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What's going to happen to you once we leave? I don't know. I don't know who I am. I am here only to guide you and any who seek to travel this path. Tell me, before I have lingered here long, what of the world beyond? Currently, rather dangerous times. Times we are hoping to pass through quickly and into a more peaceful age. There is not in a soul that has walked this earth that has not known even dangerous days. Do not look on the follies of the world and think yourself weak. Only think yourselves suited to the tasks to which you are born. Good wisdom. Thank you. <laughs> we shall be on our way, my friend. Oh yeah, cool. <laughs> Great. Let's go. And you make way through the, ghost. <laughs> the <laughs> final chamber door. And I think we'll call yeah. it that. Yeah. <laughs> I think you stack all four of them on it. Just, yeah, you explode. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this verse of The Last Song of Arcadia. It featured Ian Agnew as Hyros, Madison Cadulo as Saren, Freddie Nitsche as Kashek, Robin Fender as Surrey, and Trevor Fail as the Dungeon Master. Crit Out of Luck is brought to you with the help of our Patreon supporters. If you had fun listening today, you can also support us at patreon.com slash crit out of luck. Stay cool.